Vicky Lambalula speaking earlier uh, today. We'll be speaking to energy analyst Chris Yelland about that uh, just a little later this hour. But meantime, of course, we're sitting in an indefinite stage six of load shedding. That means eight hours if not more, per day without power. Well, the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, or CSIR, monitors electricity output, coal use, and power cuts. Of course, we don't need a research institute to tell us just how bad it is, given that we've had load shedding every day so far this year, and we're currently in an indefinite stage six of blackouts. But it is important to take a closer look at the data, as it contains important clues to the real state of our power crisis and perhaps a way out of it. I'm joined now by Monique LaRue from the CSIR. Monique, always great to chat to you. Before we dive into the data, I've got to ask you about this tweet that came out from ESCOM spokesperson person earlier this week and it said load shedding um, 7,000 plus megawatts on the 21st of February. A lot of people are saying, hang on a minute, 7,000 plus megawatts means that actually we've already hit stage seven. Would you agree? Absolutely, um, Sally. Unfortunately, we weren't able to verify that data for ourselves, but it is definitely possible that if Eskom went into stage seven without needing to announce it, we know that they've got measures to contain um, certain stages of load shedding, key customers at their phone that can pull back some of their generation so, so they don't need to announce it and alarm customers unnecessarily. So very possible that we went into stage seven load shedding and from the data that we've got, um, they seriously had to cut back on plan maintenance this week to avoid higher stages of load shedding. All right. Now, um, taking a look at the data that you've compiled, very comprehensive. Um, if we start with looking at the mix of our power, uh, it's coal, which dominates, always has dominated, but there's also nuclear, diesel, gas, hydro, wind, solar, and others in that. We have always been told that coal provides 80% of our power, but you're saying that for the first time in 2022, it actually dipped below that. Tell us why. Yes, absolutely. So if we look at um, the mix on, in generation 10 years ago, coal um, provided around 90% of the power in the country. And in 2022, for the first time, we saw that it only provided 75% of the power in South Africa. And that basically is only due to the inavailability of coal. And then, of course, luckily, we've got some new generation online um, in the form of renewables, wind and solar, CSP. Um, generation sources like that. But there's a big gap that's filled in by load shedding, unfortunately. So we're not at 100% supply, as, as people will personally know from, from experiencing large levels of load shedding in 2022 and 2023 to date. Talk to us about your energy availability factor, which is something else that you're tracking. You mentioned that the coal usage was down, uh, suggesting that that's, is that because of our ailing fleets? Yes, so we obviously have been tracking the data for a number of years and we see that the energy availability factor for coal specifically has really shown a great and deep decline over the last 10 years. Um, last year it was tracking around 40% availability at some stage, which is really very alarming um, to think that a, a power station or a power company has got a coal fleet that's supposed to supply 80% of the power and that's just available 40% of the time. And that's what we're looking at at the moment. And we, together with that, we're also looking um, at planned versus unplanned maintenance. And we're seeing that there's a large disconnect between planned and unplanned maintenance. In the past, you had planned maintenance that was dominating. Now we've moved to a scenario where unplanned maintenance is by far dominating um, the, the landscape in the energy sector. Where is this all heading? You know, we're hearing um, what Andre de Reiter said, and, and it's certainly not the first time we've heard about the so-called coal mafia. We know that the energy availability factor generally has been declining since, I think, 2016, 2017. What kind of year are we in for at this point, bearing in mind how dire uh, it's been so far in 2023? Celia, I think no one really wants to hear bad news anymore, and, and I wish that I had some good news to share. But unfortunately, if you look at the numbers, this year is going to be a difficult year. And unfortunately, we can't see that it's going to get much better going forward unless there's the steps change um, in, in generation that's added to the grid and that's what we really need because our current fleet just cannot keep up with, with demands, whether that's due to 
um, the fact that the plant hasn't been maintained and there hasn't been proper maintenance in, in past years or whether there's sabotage, those qu questions remain open and unanswered. But the fact is we definitely need, gener need um, new generation added to the grid. And we've crunched the numbers for the year ahead and, and it looks like we're very likely going to hit um, stage eight at some stage. If we look at a, a sort of a, a week that we had now um, in winter where demand is a lot higher, there's a very good chance that we could see stages higher than, than stage eight. You, you also track the alternative um power that comes in. You've been looking at that since I think at least 2013, wind and solar and of course others. Um, how is it growing? How quickly is it growing? Is it growing quickly enough to at some point start mitigating against what's happening with our coal fleet? So yes, we've been tracking the, the data for renewables since 2013. In 2013, we had around 400 megawatts of renewables connected to the grid, and that's grown steadily. Um, we, in 2022, we had around 6,000 megawatts connected to the grid, which, which is positive news. But if you look at the standard renewable plant, um, solar, the capacity factor, which means the amount of generation that you get from a typical solar plant is only around 25% availability. And from a wind plant, you're looking at 30 to 40 percent availability so unfortunately for renewables you need to build a lot of renewables to really um, see the effect of it on the network and, and at the levels that we're talking around now tonight we've got a 6,000 megawatt deficit so that means that you're going to have to build 6,000 times three times four um, megawatts to really make a difference um, Eskom and governments have said that they've got 9,000 megawatts of generation that's going to be connected to the grid um, in the following years, which is definitely positive and it will um, relieve some stages of load shedding, but it's not the amount of generation that we need to really get us out of this crisis. I think the last time we spoke, we chatted about the fact that there were problems with the grid and it was that it's an aging grid as well, that the grid uh, needs to connect to these farms, which are often in far flung places in the Northern Cape. Have you managed to get any more information about that? Because it does seem like there has been some attention paid. I'm just not sure if it's sufficient. So, yes, unfortunately, no real good news in that. We've had lots of discussions with um, key players in the industry and with government at large, and everyone's trying to make a plan. But the fact remains is that we need large investments in the grid to really solve the problem. Um, Eskom in their transmission development plan themselves have said that we're looking at 10-year lead times and around 500 billion rand of investment that's needed in the grid. And those are big projects that's not going to come online in the next five years. We're looking at a 10-year um, timeline, unfortunately. So. I think it's very important at this stage for um, private sector, government, everyone who's got a hand in this and can contribute to, to ending this crisis, to, to get hands on deck um, and look at possible solutions, because that's where we are. Um, we the, seen yesterday that they've announced in the budget spe speech that there will be tax um, breaks and rebates for people who connect solar to their roofs and for, go uh, for companies who invest in solar. And those are really good measures. And that's what we need at this time, because those projects can be brought online quickly um, and much quicker than, than the grid can be problems can be solved. Thank you so much. Always so great to chat to you. Even though the news isn't great, it's important to know where we stand. Thank you so much, Monique LaRue from the CSIR, telling us uh, that her outlook for the rest of the year, bearing in mind where we're coming from, not looking good. And she predicts that we may well hit stage eight.